Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this season's episode of Lo-Fi. Hello, I'm Andy Ortiz. And I'm Madeline Johnson. Today we'll take you through three productions made by the Fall 2023 Lo-Fi TV show crew. That's right. Lo-Fi has worked extra hard this year to inspire, humor, and most of all, entertain you. Should we tell them a bit about Lo-Fi first, Andy? Absolutely. Lo-Fi are the ladies of film and media industry. A student film club at Saddleback College, Lo-Fi primarily focuses on women's participation and success within the film industry. Yes, and it's not limited to ladies only. Anyone's welcome to join, as long as you're a Saddleback student. I personally am incredibly grateful for a platform and support system like Lo-Fi. It's no secret that this is a male-dominated industry. Just last year, women made up only 26 of behind-the-camera roles. And in all 95 years of Academy Award history, women have made up approximately 2% of all nominations for Best Director. Only women, only three women have won the award. This discrepancy is the reason for Lo-Fi. Everything we show today is produced and created primarily by our own ladies. We will hear from OC's female filmmakers, compete in a trivia game show, and watch cinematographers go head-to-head -head in a contest. As we have said, we need more women in leadership roles in this industry. For our first story, let's hear from four aspiring and inspiring female filmmakers right here in Orange County. We have some special interviews with Saddleback's very own film students, covering everything from their favorite movies to their opinions on the future of women in film. Without further ado, let's jump in. Hi, my name is Nikki Bai. Hi, my name is Armin Afi. Hi, I'm Callie Wood. Hi, my name is Susie Wilson, and I'm going to be answering some questions for Lo-Fi's Women in Film documentary. My family was pretty supportive, just because my mom is also an artist, and like my mom's side of the family are artists and stuff. I think that when you first say that you're going to go into film and you have nothing to show for at first, it's like everyone's kind of like, oh. And then when you start making stuff, then they're like, okay, you're like doing something. Honestly, they weren't very surprised. I was very creative as a kid growing up and have always leaned more towards creative career options. I think they were supportive of it because I've always been like creative as a kid, but I felt like they were kind of nervous, <laughs> like concerned of like, oh, like make sure you're doing this, make sure you study that, you know, to make sure you have a job. In the future. I've been sending my dad the things I've been making throughout the semester and he's been like oh that's cool or like oh whatever but I feel like I've been getting better and so he's more supportive and like he's interested in what I'm doing now. Well I have a couple reasons. One is that I would watch movies um, especially bad movies interested me because I couldn't help but think like I could do that. Like, I feel like one of my biggest insecurities with being in film is that I don't watch as many movies nearly as much as everybody else does. But I think that's because my like origin of coming into film is a little bit different. Like I love movies, but what really got me into film is like the creative part of it. I've always had a passion in like a lot of different fields of the arts and I couldn't pick just one to go into and film really encapsulates every single aspect of art that there is. And for the longest time I was trying to figure out like what I wanted to do. And like I went from like fashion design to graphic design to like journalism and writing. And I found that like with film, I took one film class and all of those things somehow are a part of it. And there's so many opportunities to like be creative and express yourself with film. Because you're creating, like, in a film, you're creating a whole world, like, from scratch. Being part of creating a film is, like, bringing your inner child out. Because, like, as a kid, you write stories and you want to bring those characters to life. But, I mean, as a kid, what can you do? You just had your younger sibling, older sibling, and then they would play with you or you play with your dolls. You're making the characters move the way you want to. So when, uh, when I think of film, I'm like, oh, my God, like... I can make people come together and make something that's just on top of my head. And I think that's so fun. It's like, it's like I'm a kid again. <laughs> I actually really liked being part of the camera team. It, and that's really funny because I originally went in film for the more creative aspects of it. And being part of the camera team is obviously the more technical part unless you're a DP. But 
it was actually really fun being able to like work with all that gear and the people and just like when you get a really nice shot you're like that sense of accomplishment i have a huge passion for production design i love um set design i love anything art department i originally wanted to do writing because i went from wanting to be a writer to want to be a script writer. So I do want to do writing at some point, but I would love to direct. I think everyone wants to direct, but I'm, that's the end goal, I think, is to be able to write something and then direct it myself. Yeah, production design, set decoration, um, props, and wardrobe. I have a big interest in interior design, history, and architectural history, and then like fashion history. And I think that call comes in handy for product, or, yeah, production design and wardrobe and all that. I hope that in five to 10 years, women make up more of the behind the camera roles and the leadership roles in the production of films and media. I hope producers and distributors give women more chance to direct and people like take women more seriously. There'd be more opportunities for us to just be accepted into jobs because I know a lot of it is due to connections as well and a lot of it, as I said before, like grips and gaffers, like a lot of them are men because of the physical aspect of it. So I just hope like more jobs will be able to open up in general for everyone, but for women as well and things that are more conventionally for men. I'd also like to see a lot more um, female-driven films, like female narrative films. I think Barbie was obviously a pretty important example of that recently, and I'd love to see more, maybe even subtler versions of that going forward. But I'm a cheerleader, Ladybird, and I'm gonna have to go Coraline. I just feel such an emotional connection to all of them after watching them. I think I've seen all three of those like a hundred times. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I love that one because I love the mother-daughter relationship and I feel like it it's like a sci-fi, interdimensional type of genre, but they talk about so many human emotions and like experiences and it's just, I thought it was beautiful. Goodwill Hunting. I love Goodwill Hunting. Every time I watch it, it makes me it makes me cry for him, especially the part where he's like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. That, that part just really resonates with me because a lot of things like maybe in your own life, you think like, oh, that's your fault. And this has nothing to do with film, but like in general, it, it just like shows how strong film is at telling a story and like resonating with people. The most recent project that I worked on that I finished was a like a little documentary package about this this fashion designer. <laughs> he has super colorful clothing and he's super like interesting. He's like I just thought he seemed really cool to make it about because visually it would be interesting as well as um, his story too. About a month ago, we finished filming my short film Mouse. And it's in the edits right now, we're on like Rough Cut 5, and it's looking pretty cool. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's a fun short film about, you know, getting away with murder, I guess is how I would say that. And then I'm working on a couple scripts for next semester's class that I hopefully will do something with. I've always wanted to direct, and I never felt ready. I never felt like I had enough experience, enough time, enough hours under my belt, enough time being on set and around directors. And then I thought, you know, it's, it's time to jump, kid. You gotta, you gotta do it. Like, if it, if it even though it's scary, um, you, have to, you, you have to give yourself the chance. So um, I decided to do it and um, I never, but <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. Wow, I can't believe the talent and hard work these ladies put into their projects. Me neither, Madeline. I wouldn't be surprised to see their names on a big screen soon enough. If you'd like to know more about these female filmmakers, check out their social media platforms below. Speaking of, Susie Wilson's short film, Mouse, might be screened at Newport Beach Film Festival next year. Stay tuned. I don't know about you all, but I love some good trivia. 
I've never been good at trivia. Well, hopefully you never audition for Jeopardy. This game show we are about to play is a bit more curated for the movie watchers and movie makers. Lights Camera Trivia is a game show of film trivia. Let's watch as these contestants battle with knowledge for a cash prize. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the dazzling world of knowledge and entertainment. Get ready to shine as we dive into the realms of lights, camera, trivia, where movie magic means mind-boggling facts, and where your love for cinema merges with the thrill of trivia. I'm thrilled to be your guide through the cinematic journey filled with fun, facts, and a dash of Hollywood glamour. So grab your popcorn, sit back, and let's embark on an exhilarating adventure through the world of movies and trivia. Our first contestant is a Saddleback dropout, is always making movie references, and loves puppies. Give it up for Hunter. How are you doing? Great, great, yeah, good. I was told there was some reward for Oh, you just show. had to spoil the surprise. Yes, the winner of tonight's show is going home with a hundred bucks in their pocket, courtesy of our producer's wallet that I didn't pit pocket from, Callie Nguyen. Awesome, awesome, yeah, yeah. I really need those hundred dollars to pay off my parking ticket from security. And now let's meet our next contestant. She flew all the way from New York just to be here tonight and loves pizza. Give it up for the lovely Madeline. Thank you for having me, Mrs. Host Person. I'm so honored to be here. We're so lucky to have you here. Tell me, why did you fly out all the way from the Big Apple just to be here tonight? Well, to tell you the truth, I heard there was a prize and I was hoping it was money. Work is hard to find out there for an actress like myself in a big city all alone. It's hard to get on day by day. I sleep in the sewers, and I have no one to talk to except my best friend, Emmanuel, who's a giant rat, and he keeps me up all night biting my legs. I really want the $100 so I can take him on the top of the Empire State Building eating cheese together. He's so cute. I think he'll propose to me. Okay, and last but not least, let's give it up for our last contestant, uh, this guy. Tell us about yourself. Hi, so um, I love photography, and um, this reward money would be like really important to me because my mom has actually been sick, so if I could like pay for her medicine or anything. Okay, we don't have that kind of time. All right, folks, I think it's about time to start to play Lights, Camera, Trivia. What mode of transportation is the Polar Express? A train. Correct. What is the first foreign language movie to win an Oscar for Best Picture? Parasite. Correct. <laughs> What was the first pandemic era movie to gross over $1 billion at the box office? Spider-Man No Way Home. Correct! What Martin Scorsese movie holds the all-time record for F-bombs? Wolf of Wall Street. Correct! Who played Han Solo in Harrison Star Ford. Correct! What was Quentin Tarantino's first feature as writer-director? Reservoir Dogs. Correct! In Apocalypse Now, Robert Duvall says, I, I love, love the smell of napalm in the morning. What is the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time? The Joker. Correct! What song plays over the opening credits of Guardians of the Galaxy? Come and Get Your Love by Redbone. Correct! In The Matrix, does Neo take the blue pill or the red pill? The red pill, obviously. Correct! Wow, you guys have been doing amazing. I'm going to bump up the difficulty just a little bit to make this more interesting. I'm going to go ahead and start with you, uh, guy. Here we go. In the 1999 film, The Sixth Sense, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, what color is the doorknob on the door in the secret room of Dr. Malcolm's house, and what is the meaning behind it? Um, green? Yikes, not even close. Okay, let's go with Madeline. Easy, it's red. The color signifies a threshold between the living and the dead, and it also signifies the intense emotional moments and situations in the movie. Well, couldn't have said it better myself. How did you not know that? <laughs> okay, contestant one, here's your question. What color is my outfit? Cougar. Correct! And, uh, okay, back to this guy, I guess. Now, so sorry for that last one. Let's give you something a little bit easier, okay? All right. In the classic film Casablanca, what is the name of the song that Sam, the piano player, is asked to play by Ilsa Lund, and why, why is it significant to the story? Uh, I don't, I don't know. 
Not even close. Sheesh! Where did we find this guy? Okay, Hunter, please tell me you know this. Elementary, my dear. Is the Lund request Sam to play as time goes by? The song holds immense significance to the story as it serves as a powerful symbol of love, nostalgia, and the bittersweet memories shared between Isla and Rick. Correct! And with that, we go to our last and final question of the show, and this will determine who will be the winner. Whoever answers first correctly wins. However, losers will get a harsher punishment. Losers will lose privilege to renting out Saddleback's film equipment for an entire year. As agreed in the fine print and the release forms, we even have CTVR chair Hiro Kanishi as our witness. Great, now let's go get started. Hey, get to pay your parking ticket. Folks, don't mess around with Saddleback security. They will track you down and find you. Okay, we're down with two contestants now. The winner gets $100, and this will be our last question, so it's all or nothing. What is the only planet in our solar system that rotates clockwise opposite to the direction of most other planets' rotation and on its side nearly perpendicular to its orbit around the sun? Uranus. Correct! Uranus? Correct! Uh, congratulations, Madeline. You are tonight's winner. Unfortunately, due to budget cuts and the fact that the director hasn't paid me, I'm keeping the hundred dollars. Well, that's our show, folks. Thank you for watching. And now I'm going to go get some Korean barbecue. Have a good night, y'all. Well, that was definitely trivial. I hope that guy paid off his parking ticket. Now I think about it, I can't remember if I paid mine today. Um, all right, never mind that. Let's move on. Unfortunately, it looks like there is no winner, but that's okay. Maybe the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. Luckily, our next production does have a winner. In the first ever Cine Challenge, three cinematographers will show off their skills and creativity for a grand prize. There's a catch though, of course. To make a real challenge, all the contestants received a theme and a random item to incorporate in their video. That's right, not to mention the time limit. They only get one hour total to set up and film the shots. And they're all using different equipment and come from varying levels of experience. It will be interesting to see what these three come up with. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into it. Here's what our cinematographers came up with for the theme, Solitude. Hello, we're here with What's up? I'm Oliver Rudolph. <laughs> it will be our cinematographer today. Good and to who you. did you bring with you? I brought my partner right here, Gianni Sergi. Hey! So. What, what are you going to be doing today, Gianni? I'll tell him what to do. This guy. He's uh. directing. Um, and our actors are Ethan Chambers and Madeline oh. Johnson. She's over there. <laughs> She's rolling out. <laughs> Oh, okay, how, how do you feel about today? Me? Are you oh, excited? Personally, Are you I'm very excited, but I've, I'm very um, nervous because I've never been given the challenge or a time restraint, you know, to do, mm. to do a, a project. So I'm interested to see how we work under pressure and under time to see, because I know I won't be able to get the shots exactly how I want. So picking and choosing my exact shots will be interesting for me. Mm. Yeah. So. And what what equipment are you using today? I'm using a Black Magic 6K Pro and a couple of Airy Fresnel lights. Yeah. That's so awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, Love and that. what is your secret item, and where is it? Can you show me? Here it is. Okay. Got a little critter. Oliver's oh. secret item, random item for this is. A little critter. So Six, it's yeah. it's basically yeah a little toy um, kitten. <laughs> okay, cool. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, Let's I'm gonna start the timer. You have one hour. Uh, no. Exactly.
we're here with one of our contestants. Cassidy Lyon. Yes. And <laughs> tell us what equipment you'll be using today. Okay, today I'm going to be using this little handle in my iPhone 13 for the challenge. And oh, and her secret item. My secret item is a Finney Walker traveling alarm clock. Yes. Yeah. Very excited. The memory of the vision today is going to be something that is about a couple and it's going to go in reverse. So the final product will not look like how I'm taking it uh, as I go, but it'll be like in a different order, if that makes sense. Starting in three, two, one. All right, we're here with... Cameron. Say the full name. Cameron J. Schultz. Yeah, and we're on a little time crunch since we got here late. So we have to be out of here by 5.55. And we're gonna start... <laughs> we're gonna we start, have a lot of time right yeah. now, so let's make this interview quick. Yeah, it's gonna be... Um, they're setting up right now. My object is mistletoe. Yes. I have my dear friend, Miguel. Okay. Um, and... We have Susie on PD. Susie? Hey. Can we get Susie? Hi, Susie. And we have the wonderful Bo Torres as Gaffer. And Jorge. Where's Go where's back. Bo? <laughs> Go back in the light. Oh, my hella close. Sorry. <laughs> and, and Jorge. Well, Jorge's running away. Jorge is our dolly grip for today. Yeah. So it's going to be extra, extra difficult shoot. Let's see what happens. Super uh, time crunch. We've got 30 minutes. We're going to do that. I'm going to give myself 30 I'm minutes. Gonna, so. I'm just going to start the timer. Right yeah. Start it right now. I, that's what I thought. Okay. Let's yeah, see yeah, this. yeah. Hold on. How many minutes do I have? Until... Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.
Wow, they each came up with fantastic videos. There can only be one winner though. Our panel of judges have ranked cinematographers on a scale from 1 to 10 based on the cinematography and how well they incorporated the theme and their random items. That's right. We're proud to announce that we have the special honor of crowning the winner here today in the studio. In this envelope, we have the name of the cinematographer with the highest score from our panel and who will receive the grand prize. The winner is... Congratulations, Cameron Schultz. Come up and get your prize. Hey, congratulations, man. Thank this you. is really good. Thank you, thank congratulations. You. Thank you so much. Here's your trophy, man. Thank you very much. There you go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. What a close race. They each landed within one point of each other. I'm happy to get an actual winner this time, though. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We got personal female filmmakers. And some movie trivias. And saw an amazing work from our cinematographers. If you would like to stay connected with Lo-Fi and what we are up to, you can find us on these platforms below. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an honor. I'm your host, Andy Ortiz. And I'm your host, Madeline Johnson. Thank you for coming to the show. See you next year. Bye-bye. <laughs>